Hi there everyone, thanks for joining us today for another episode of 3D Printing Thursday. This is Jesse Hallworth, 3D Printing Application Engineer with Hawkridge Systems, and in today's episode I'll be showing you how you can use Materialize Magics to easily create 3D printable lattice structures, which are a great option for optimizing and lightweighting your parts. So, as you can see, we'll start off this video with a sample part of the Hawkridge Systems logo. Before going through our first structure example, I'll use the Mark Surface tool here to mark the top surfaces of this part, since that's what we'll be basing our first lattice generation on. With these surfaces marked, I'll next move to the Structures tab on the top ribbon, which gives us a honeycomb structure option as well as a more general structures option where the remaining lattices are found. I'll start by selecting the honeycomb option, which will open the Structure Generation tool. Here, you can see several options that will help us easily change the parameters of our part. Right now, we are in the Local tab, which will apply these settings to only this specific part, but if we wanted to apply Honeycomb to every piece of geometry currently loaded into Magix, we could use the Global option as well. Now, within this tool, there's a ton of ways we can customize our Honeycomb structure. The first selection that we can adjust on this list is the Wall Thickness, which is pretty straightforward as it changes the thickness of our walls surrounding all the honeycomb infill. Next we have detail size which controls how fine the mesh is for this new structure. Increasing this option can help with generation time if the geometry is extremely complex. Further down the list there are two options that directly control the honeycomb. Hole diameter will change the size of every individual hexagon like you can see here and the infill thickness changes the physical spacing in between the repeating pattern. I've made some small adjustments to each of these values and we'll keep those for now. Infill depth is a nice option as this lets you decide how far you want your structure to extend into your geometry. I want my entire interior of this part to be replaced with honeycomb so I will leave this unchecked. The last few options we'll go over for this tool are infill direction, delete marked triangles, and perforations. Infill direction allows for more control over the honeycomb structure angle. You can have your honeycomb run normal to a chosen surface, such as the surfaces we selected for this part, manually set the angle, or use the indicate line and indicate triangle settings to run it parallel to chosen geometry. Delete marked triangles is another straightforward option and can be great for additional light weighting. If you recall, we started this example by marking the top surfaces of this part, and if those weren't critical to the final application, we could simply use this structure tool to delete them if desired. Lastly, the perforations area can be used to automatically create holes for material removal if your structure and shells would result in trapped printing material. Okay, so by now, you probably want to see the actual end result, so I will go ahead and start the honeycombing and using the magic of editing to bypass our 30 second generation time, we now have our lightweight part. I won't ask you to take my word for it though, so I'll go ahead and turn on one of our cutting planes to view the inside of our part. And as you can see, our honeycomb is all set and ready to be sent to the printer. So what about the rest of those lattice structures I mentioned earlier? Well, to demonstrate those, we'll quickly switch to a custom insole part. For this part, we want to lightweight the front and back support areas while keeping the interior area solid. So to do that, we will first separate these two areas by using the cut or punch tool. There's a lot of different ways that this tool can separate geometry, but for now, we'll just draw a simple polyline to indicate where we want to cut. Once we hit apply, you can see that our geometry is now fully separated. Again, we only want to create a lattice structure for the larger of these two pieces, so before getting started, we will quickly deselect the smaller one from our part list since these are technically now two separate parts. Now, we'll go back to our Structures tab and open up the Structures Generation tool. The first step in this particular tool is defining whether or not you want the outside of your part to be solid. Keeping an outer shell would eventually let us add custom drain holes for trapped material if needed, but for this example, we're just going to opt to have no outer shell and continue. 
Next comes the real fun part of selecting what lattice we want to work with. As you can see, there's a ton of different options we could select, and Magix even has the option of letting you import your own lattice design if you have one. We're going to be working with one of the default ones here for this example, and once we have it selected, we have the option of changing its size and even automatically adjusting the aspect ratio of our lattice based on any size changes we make. You can also heavily customize other parts of your lattice, such as the spacing and growth, but for now, we'll simply leave our small start position edit in place and click finish, which is all we need to start the generation process. Once again, through the power of editing, we'll shorten the 20 seconds of computation, and now we have our fully formed lattice structure. We could now export both of these bodies for printing if we wanted, but the last quick task we'll perform is to combine them back into one file. This can be done by selecting our two pieces, navigating back to the Edit tab, and then selecting Merge Parts. And now we're back to a single optimized part that is ready for printing. As you can see, Materialize Magix makes the lattice structure generation process very simple and straightforward. And this makes it easy to create parts that might otherwise be impossible to produce. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions, and feel free to subscribe to the Hawkridge Systems YouTube channel to keep up with content like this. Happy printing, everyone.